Good morning, everyone. Um, today on Word of Life Devotions, I'm going to talk to you about being God's voice. And so it's very important as a children of the kingdom of God that we understand that we house a creative spirit on the inside of us, and it's the Holy Spirit. And our words have uh, power or they have death within them. And so the Bible tells us that, that we need to speak life. And so we're going to go through some scriptures today. And I pray that this is a blessing to you and this adjusts the way you speak after today. And so we're going to begin first in John 6.63. And Jesus speaking, he said, It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. Jesus did not mix words. And so he's teaching us that words can come out of two realms as a child of God. They come out of our soul, out of our flesh, or they can come out of the spirit of God. And so we need to be very careful about the words that we speak. I'm going to read some scriptures this morning out of the book of James. And I'll start with James chapter 1. Uh, verse 19 because how many know that the word changes us I can speak a lot of things but the word of God will transform your mind today and so in James 1 it says this you know my beloved brethren but everyone must be quick to hear slow to speak and slow to anger for the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God therefore putting aside all filthiness and all that remains in wickedness, he said, in humility, receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls. But prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. And so when I read that, I'm looking at when, when it says to be uh, quick to listen and then slow to speak. And so we know that he's talking about our flesh. He's talking about the area of the soul. And we know that God created the soul. The soul is not a bad, of course. We need the soul to live in the earth. It's mind, will, your emotions. Everything God created is good. And so we have to command our soul to line up with the spirit as a child of God. And so the soul is how we can enjoy um, the life that God has given us. It's how we communicate in the earth realm. Um, it's also a process of thoughts and emotions, a will. It is so complex, the soul, the mind. But we have to be careful, you know, how we, what we let in our gates. Because what comes into the mind, it, first it, we know it's a thought. And then next thing we know, if we meditate on the thought, we're going to speak what we're thinking. Right? And, so we, and then we're going to act on what we've said. And so it's very, very important that we understand that. And it's also a place where the enemy tries to conquer our imaginations and conquer our reasonings. And so the enemy wants us to set up, he wants to set up in our thoughts today. He wants us to begin to speak out of our situation instead of what God is saying. He wants us to attack other people and, and not to be quick to hear the spirit, but just to be moved in our emotions that are toxic and all of those things because the Bible also says that we can be snared by the words of our mouth. And so I'm going to read the next out of James chapter 3 today. It says, So also the tongue is a small part of the body, and yet it, it boasts great things. And that's that pride, because it's a world of iniquity, which is pride within our mouth. It says, it says See how great a forest is set aflame by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, the very world of iniquity. And the tongue is set among our members as that which defiles the entire body. And it says, and it sets on fire the course of our life and is set on fire by hell. That's pretty intense words coming out of James, uh, talking about the tongue, talking about how we speak and what we say. And not only that, but the spirit behind what's coming out. And so... He continues to say, For every species of beasts and birds, of reptiles and creatures of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by human race, but no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil and full of deadly poison. He says, And with it we bless our Lord and our Father, and with it we curse men. He's talking about what we speak. And he says, No one can tame it, but I know one that can, and that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can tame your mouth. And it says, with, with it we um, 
Cursed men who have been made in the likeness of God from the same mouth come both blessing and cursing. And he says, my brethren, these things ought not to be. Then he says, does a fountain send out from the same opening both fresh and bitter water? So you see James is speaking here. He's teaching us about the power of what we speak and the spirit behind what we say. And so God is able to tame our tongue. He's able as we cooperate with the Holy Spirit, he can capture our thoughts because that's a warfare is in the mind. It says that we are to take captive every thought into the obedience of Jesus. We got to take those captive thoughts so we don't speak them out of our mouth because we have power within us. And so you have to speak like God. You got to be God's words in the earth. In Proverbs 8:15, it says, By me kings reign. And rulers decree justice. And so remember, you're kings and priests in the earth. So you're called to rule and reign in the earth as a child of God. And a part of the ruling and reigning is what we're saying, what we speak, how we pray, how we decree a thing. And so the power of life and death is in our mouth as a child of God. Job 22, a common verse, 28. It says, you will also decree a thing and it will be established for you. And light will shine on your ways. And so as we speak life, guess what? Light shines our path. As we speak light in the difficult situation, it invites the power and the glory of God into things in our life that are difficult. And so it's up to us. We attract angels by hearkening and speaking the word of God over difficult people. Come on. Situations, family issues. We can release angels in that. Or we can um, give the demonic power to continue to cause conflict, division, and all of those things. And the Bible says in Ecclesiastics that winged creatures will carry the matter. When we curse the king in our bedchambers and when we say these things, we have that much power within us. And so we need to understand that we're attracting light or dark by what we say. And I'm just going to say this because I was thinking about this today. How God give us authority in the earth. And even Jesus spoke to storms. Yes, he did. He spoke to the storm and he said, peace be still. There's a delegated authority to the children of the kingdom that many have not yet stepped into. And so and many of these things are held back from us because God knows we don't know how to speak like him. And we don't understand who we are yet in the kingdom. And so another thing, too, and, and you know, people say to me, oh, it's flu season, or every year I, I get the flu. Every year I get bronchitis. The devil is a liar. And so what you're saying is you're coming into agreement. You're speaking words against your health. You're speaking words against even your finances when you say, I'll always be broke. And so you have what you say. You have what you speak over your marriage. You have what you speak over your children. So you need to understand that your words have power. And so uh, Jesus in Luke 9, he rebuked James and John because it said that, and you can read chapter 9 of Luke, it says that when Jesus went into the Samaritan village and he was working and they rejected him and he wanted to bring uh, the gospel of the kingdom in there, they rejected Jesus. So James and John in verse 54 says to Jesus, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? And Jesus turns and he rebukes his disciples and he says, You do not know what kind of spirit you are of. He says, For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. So we are disciples of the kingdom, disciples of Jesus. And so a disciple of Jesus becomes like their master in their thoughts, their words, and their deeds. And so, hello, we need to change the way we've been speaking today. Matthew 12, 36, Jesus said, men will have to give an account of every idle word they speak. Why? Because your words have power, dark or light. Your words can bring destruction. Your words can bring life. And so I'm just going to uh, begin to pray today. I want you to think about the hard place that you're in right now. What have you been saying about it? What have you been speaking about it? Maybe it's lack. Maybe it's um, a difficult conflict in a relationship or marriage. Or maybe you've been cursing our government. Come on now. 
If you're a child of the kingdom, you better be praying and decreeing some righteousness and, and decreeing some things. And God commands us to pray for leaders. God commands us to pray for those in authority. And so we need to rethink our confession today. We need to repent and replace some words in the name of Jesus. You need to repent of some words. Often I say, Father, because we, we just speak things sometimes before we, before we process the situation. And so, so many times I have to say, Father, I negate every negative, inoperable, cursed word I've ever spoken. I negate it. I cover it in the blood of Jesus. And you need to do that today because you're probably causing the difficult, toxic situation to continue to cycle and to continue uh, to be in your life because you've been allowing it by what you've been speaking. And so rethink your confessions. Repent for negative words. Repent for unbelief, doubt-filled words. Repent for those things and replace them with the Word of God. Replace them with uh, the Word of truth today. So I'm just going to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to show you uh, why you're still in a situation. It's, it, it could be because of what you speak. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father God, for the conviction power of the Holy Spirit, even now that's being released to the people that are hearing this. Father, we repent for negative confessions, negative words. We repent for cursing our own bodies. We repent for cursing one another. We repent, Father, for complaining, for doubting, for unbelief, Father, for toxic communication. We repent for gossip. We repent for slander, Father. We repent, Father, because we're holding up the inheritance that we have as children of the kingdom. You desire to give us authority. You desire for us to walk in deeper realms of authority, Father. You, you want to trust us with our mouth. And so, Father, I just thank you right now that, that we have been enlightened today in this devotion. I thank you for washing us with the blood of Jesus. And I thank you that the difficult situation that they're having right now, that they will find the word on it. They will find the word of God and they will begin to release the word of God. That angels would hearken to the word of the Lord that's coming out of their mouth. And we give you all the glory for it, Father. And we don't live in condemnation. Maybe you've never heard anything like this. It's okay. You heard it today. And so begin to shift and change what you speak. The Holy Spirit is your teacher. He will teach you how to speak. He will teach you how to talk. He, he can fill you with his spirit in the name of Jesus. And so seek him about these things. And so, Father, we bless you today and we worship you and we honor you today in Jesus' name. Amen.